everyone, it's Shell C from Paper Rock Geo Studio, and today I'm sharing with you days 25, 26, and 27 of the Bridget Coopson's gel printing challenge that she has over on Instagram. So we're just about rounding out the month of gel printing every single day, and I didn't do every single prompt, but I did most of them. So I have a lot of other videos if you haven't already watched them. So for day 25, the prompt was wax crayon. Now the thing that I find interesting with wax crayons to do with the gel plate is to make a wax resist. So I took a piece of text weight paper and I drew some random doodles on there. If you like to doodle or zentangle, this would be a fun thing for you to do with your plate is to make it um, out of wax crayon. Press hard, go over it a couple times and make sure you get a lot of wax on there. And then when you put some paint down on your plate and lift it off, you will end up with a design where the crayon was because wax resists paint. And so you'll get like a doodly design on there like I did. Um, this first one, I put white paint first and then I put my um, scribbly wax thing over it and then picked up the excess paint and then was left with white designs on my plate. Then I took some brighter colors, went over the, the paint that's dried on the plate, um, the white paint that's dried on the plate, and then when I pick it up, this is what I get. White designs on a colorful background. I had a little paint left over, so I made a second print. So people will say, that you can wipe off the paint off the wax and reuse it again. I haven't really had much luck with that. Um, last year during this prompt, I did them on um, tag board, like, you know, recycled cardboard, and tried to make plates that I could reuse. And I got maybe two, uh, two prints out of it before it just wouldn't print anymore. So these I'm just printing over the top of the wax and using them as extra design. Um, some of your options you could use, I'm using crayon, Crayola crayons or you know just regular kids crayons. You could also use oil pastel which is kind of the same thing only different. <laughs> that made a lot of sense. Um, another fun thing to use would be the wax crayons that come with your Easter egg die. If you save those, uh, those would be great for doing this. Um, your design's not as easy to see, but then when you use your when you reuse your second piece, um, you'll have clear on there instead of a color. Like I'm getting colored crayon on there. Also, um, you could use the white crayon from the box, and it gives kind of the same effect as the clear crayon. You could also use a beeswax uh, crayon or uh, maybe even an oil paint stick, like a Shiva stick or something like that. There's a lot of options for doing this type of a resist. But I'm just using plain old Crayola crayons. Um, I've always loved Crayola crayons. I was obsessed with always having the big 144 box when I was younger. And I colored a lot. So this one I put the dark paint first. Then I put the resist over it. And ended up with dark lines over a light color. So it's opposite of the other one that I did. So now I'm gonna do an illustration. I was thinking about the Cheshire Cat from Alice in Wonderland. I'm trying to remember what the Cheshire Cat looked like. I can't really remember, but I think I got something close. It's a goofy um, cat with a big smile. And I'm just quickly drawing it with the crayon. Um, I didn't go over the lines as much as I did on the other ones and it didn't end up resisting as well. I was more thinking about drawing rather than thinking about making sure that I got a lot of wax on each line. Um, so that you do need to press hard and make sure that you get the wax on there really well. It will resist better. So there's my weird little cat and I'm putting some dark purple down. Um, and then on my second plate, I'm not making any wax resists on there. I'm just using stencils or whatever to 
uh, use up my excess paint because I don't like to waste paint. And then whatever's left, I roll off on my roll-off paper. But So as you can see, my resist didn't work as well. But I did wipe this one off, and I ended up with that ready red-orange color uh, with the purple, and I actually really like that. That looks cool, so I'm going to use that one too. So then because it it would just be boring to put white over this and just, you know, try to pick it up, I decided to add some color with some sponges to the plate. So I got some lemon yellow background. Um, I used some grayish blue um, color to fill in the cat and then some orange to fill in the cat's stripes and some pink on his cheeks uh, just to make the print more interesting it would be really boring if i just used one color plus i didn't get as dramatic of resist on it so not all the lines are there so just kind of need to make it fill it in make it more interesting and i think because i wiped off the print, the crayon piece, I probably could have used it again as well, but I didn't because how many cat, weird cat prints do I need? You know, do I even need one? Probably not. <laughs> I tend to like to make um, more random patterns, but I just wanted to show you could make an illustration too. My voice is a little wonky. I'm very tired and uh, worn out. This has been a really crazy month. <laughs> I've had a lot of collaborations, a lot of hops, a lot of um, responsibilities, things that I was meant to do, plus then add the gel printing on top of it. So I think that turned out cute. I, I think it's cute. Kind of looks like a kid's drawing. I don't know what I'm going to use that for, but it's cute. So the next prompt, uh, what's the next prompt? Recycle. Okay, you guys have seen me using recycling type stuff on my gel plate all month. You guys know that I make texture tools out of every type thing. Uh, maybe it's cardboard, maybe it's um, toilet paper tubes or lids from bottles. Um, the bottom of a flip-flop. You know, I've got every kind of recycled remade, redone tool that you could possibly imagine. And so I'm imagining that that's what she was thinking, you know, bubble wrap, all that type of stuff. But I decided to go with it, something else because I've already done that this month. I've showed you some of my tools. Uh, I have way more. I've got way more than I possibly could need. They're under the desk. I need to sort them out and figure out a good way to, you know, use them. <laughs> So what I decided for recycle was to recycle and get some pattern on some of my baby wipes and paper towels. This is a fun thing to do. Baby wipes and paper towels, you know, we use them in the studio and they get paint on them or ink on them and they're pretty and they've got a lot of color. You don't want to throw them away, right? So I have a bucket of those too. <laughs> so I decided I would get some paint on them using my gel plate and some stencils from Stencil Girl. These stencils are uh, from Stencil Girl Club and they're the smaller ones and then the ones that I cut up and I put them on a little key ring thing and keep them on a little hook on my by my desk. So that then um, I'm pulling out the baby wipes and then using the same colors that are on the baby wipe already to make more pattern and interest on there. And if it needs to be lightened up, I might put a layer of white or off-white on there like I did that one. Also, I'm getting secondary prints on paper because they make really cool grungy prints. The, the uh, paper towel or baby wipe is wrinkled and sometimes it also has texture on it because a lot of, of those products are embossed. Maybe they have two plies that have been embossed together. So you've got this weird texture on it. And also it doesn't completely pick up all the paint off the plate. So I'm getting a uh, buildup of crusty bits on there while still getting pattern onto my baby wipes. And this one is a paper towel, um, two ply paper towel, which I end up pulling apart at some point. These make great collage papers. They're thin and once you get 
matte medium on them. It's just like a, you know, a napkin or something. It's, um, it just glues right down, no problem. So I'm sure you'll, now that I have a few ones that I've put some pattern on, I'm sure you'll see them maybe in November on some of my art journal pages when we do art journaling every single day as a challenge with prompts from Art Joy of Sharing, my group with Peg. And, um, yeah, there's going to be a lot of art journaling video every single day in November. So I'm sure I'll be using lots of these papers that you see me making this month on those pages. So I'm continuing to just work back and forth and build a pattern and texture uh, onto my little paper towel and baby wipe collection. I have so many of these. I should, if I had time, I should just sit and do this, you know, but I never have time to just sit and do this. <laughs> I have to do it for something. I have to always be making a video or something. So then when I think that there's enough buildup on the plates, I just go ahead and pick up um, the whole thing on a piece of paper like I'm doing right here on the 6 by 6 Here's where I peel it apart. So I could go ahead and put a bunch of more paint on that other one too and I would have two of them. But as you can see it's very thin so when I put it over my dark background for the picture it made it look a lot darker. But depending on what background I put it on the collage, it will be light or dark, depending on what color of background it is, because it's very translucent. So now I've got another baby wipe. This one does definitely have like a texture. It's got a plus or dash type texture embossing on it. So that's getting on my plate as I'm working along with my um, fun little stencils. Those narrow border ones are from a couple months ago. It was a uh, mashup between Mary Beth Shaw, the stencil girl, and Carolyn Doobie. And so they took designs of each other's that they liked and they made them in different sizes. And the 9 by 12 I could cut it up into all different pieces. So I ended up with like, I think there's six of the, the narrow ones and then a couple of the other size ones. And they're just all small. I put them on a ring and I hang them next to my desk so I can whip them out if I need to. It looks like I'm picking up another print here on some regular paper. Just cleaning up all the layers of crusty bits that I've been building up as I'm working on my baby wipes, recycling my baby wipes. Do you have to gel print your baby wipes? No. You can just recycle them as they are. They've got interesting pattern and color on them already, but it's nice. It's fun to just uh, put a little gel printing, printing texture on there. On a few of them. Use them up. Use up your stash. We've all got crazy amounts of stuff we're we've hoarding in our studio and we need to use them. <laughs> so this is where I brought in that turquoise. That's a color I need to replace. I use it a lot and it's almost empty. That's a Liquitex Basics. Most of the paints I'm using on all this gel printing that's going on all month is my Arteza acrylic paint tubes. It was a set of 24 and I'm just trying to use them up. You know, I've got a lot of, <laughs> a lot of paint. And so I've been trying to use up the Arte Arteza ones, but they're still, they've still got paint in them. And I don't think... I'm going to use them all up because it's almost, the month is almost over. And then I generally use white, off-white, Naples yellow, um, black, or uh, the light blue and the light pink pastel colors um, to do my pickups to clean up. And so those are the larger tubes that you see coming in. They're from Liquitex Basics and Amsterdam brand. So there's the teal and blue ones that I did. Lots of fun. Fun thing to do. Yeah. The final prompt for this video, I believe, is number 27, burlap. Now I have sheet burlap um, in 8.5 by 11 sheets. It's from Canvas Corp Brands back when it was Canvas Corp Brands. I think it has another new owner and new name now. Um, 1320 or something like that. Anyway, 
Um, that's what they, where this burlap came from. And I just cut a piece of it. I have it in different colors. I cut a piece of it into a 6x6 six six to make some texture on my plate. And for some reason, which I probably could explain if I tried to think about it, burlap makes me think of fall. I think it's probably because of seed bags and um, scarecrows being made in, made out of seed bags. That's probably why. Seed bags are made out of burlap. And if you've ever been on a farm, those burlap sacks are around and, you know, they're useful. They get reused. So that's probably why I'm going with kind of some fall colors here. I also ended up, after the camera was off, making some more pieces of paper with the burlap texture because I decided I wanted to use that for uh, paper piecing collage for my October um, calendar planner. You know, I, I put art on it each month, and for October I'm going to do a fall scene with this uh, burlap textured printed paper. So I made more after the, the camera went off. So. If you just use the whole sheet and press it down, uh, you put it maybe put a darker light color depending on what you want to do. You press the whole sheet on there, it makes an interesting texture that you can pick up with another layer of paint. You can also press that texture through a stencil, which I did here, and um, that was going to be a really cool print with texture and not texture. The problem that happened, you'll see, is that I ended up picking the wrong color to pick it up with. I should have picked it up with white or um, off-white. But I put the brown back over it and it just turned out yucky. I don't even like brown. I don't know why I did that. I thought it would fill in all the little lines and I would have... Yeah. Anyway, it did not turn out nice. That one's nice though. I'll probably use that one maybe on my October calendar. So here I'm putting the brown over the top and it just made everything too dark and you couldn't really see the the stencil pattern anymore hardly. So it darkened up the colors. But you can still see that burlap texture and you can still see the pattern. It just it would have been much nicer if I'd used um, unbleached titanium. So I'm switching to red and doing some with red. I have this flower and it had like three layers and two of the layers were burlap. It was from a $1 um, pick from the dollar store and it had some burlap leaves and some burlap flowers. I got it last fall and the flower was just laying there. So I thought, well, I'll make some burlap flower prints because that's cool and that's kind of fall like some flowers. And so I used the uh, the flowers and press them down over the red and then I wanted to change the centers of them so I kind of cleaned up the centers and put some brown in the center. I also put the other burlap piece over the top to hit the backgrounds. And that was kind of fun so I kept doing it. <laughs> I hope you guys are enjoying gel printing all month. People keep um, saying that they are really enjoying it and I'm getting a lot of views on these videos. So apparently watching me gel print is just something people like to do. <laughs> I guess they just like it. You guys like it and I'm, I'm happy for that. So then I switched to blue. I still got that. Yep, there's the blue. I liked that one, the kind of light yellow or off-white over the blue and I thought oh I want to make white daisies over the blue so I I took the brayer and brayered the titanium white right onto the burlap flower and then use it as a stamp and I thought that would work um, didn't work as well as I expected that's how gel printing goes you get what you get and you don't pitch a fit <laughs> Didn't show up as much as I thought. I should have put a darker color instead of that yellow. But it still looked cool. It just wasn't what I was expecting. So then I said, well, fine. If the white's not going to show up, I'm going to use black. So I put black onto 
the burlap flower using the brayer and then pressed it onto the plate. If white doesn't work, use black. It's all a play between what you put on first and then the the color that you put on, put on after. And if you don't pick correctly, you end up with something that doesn't come out as dramatic as you expected. I should have put a dark color over the white flowers and then it would have been dramatic. But instead I put a light color and then it didn't, didn't show up as much. So I decided I would do a shimmery one on a piece of black just to see what that would look like and I liked it. It has some crusty bits so it's um, got a lot of interest. And then this is a different shimmery paint over the other one. And I think I decided to put it on craft colored deli paper. Yeah. So <clears throat> there's some pictures coming up at the end, of course. And this is burlap. And you'll be seeing more burlap printed paper on October 1st on my vlog when I do my art in my planner while I'm talking. So that's it for me for today for prompts 25, 26, and 27 of the Gel Printing Everyday Challenge. Bye-bye. Thank you.